over the past 50 years, the world's population has grown exponentially. The UN Population Division predicts that by the year 2100, there will be over 10 billion people living on Earth. The problem is, we don't see an equal growth in the resources that we need to feed that growing population. Currently, 815 million people worldwide live with food insecurity, which means that they don't have access to affordable, nutritious food or always know where their next meal will come from. Food insecurity isn't something that just happens in developing countries. In the U.S., 15% of American households identify as food insecure. Nearly half of these are located in food deserts, often in urban centers. These urban food deserts aren't just found in really big cities like New York and L.A. They occur in small cities like Savannah, Georgia, too. So how can we produce more food now and in the future and help alleviate food insecurity? Unfortunately, traditional agriculture isn't the answer. Our current farming practices have environmental consequences and aren't sustainable. For example, traditional agriculture uses an insane amount of water, with 80% of ground and surface water used for crop irrigation. Around the world, only 40% of land is farmable. And of that land, only 30% is used to produce food for human consumption. The remainder, that is 70%, is used to grow feed for livestock. Livestock production contributes 15% to the total human-related greenhouse gas emissions, mostly from dairy and beef cattle. These emissions come from the production and processing of feed, and from what is called enteric fermentation. <laughs> or, to put it simply, the methane that's released when a cow passes gas. <laughs> our food also travels hundreds, if not thousands of miles to reach our plates, giving it a large carbon footprint. Let's consider the average American cheeseburger with all the fixins. Is that looking good, you guys? You ready for lunch yet? This cheeseburger releases 10 pounds of carbon dioxide in its production, from where the ingredients are grown on the farm to where they be, are packaged and processed to finally being shipped to your local restaurants and grocery stores. Now, to put this in perspective, the average human breathes out two pounds of CO2 a day, meaning that that cheeseburger you scarf down during lunch is producing five times more CO2 than you. So maybe the answer lies in the vast ocean with its endless supply of fish and seafood. Well, it turns out that 70% of commercial fish species are overfished, which means that they can't breed fast enough to replace the numbers that we are removing. If we continue with these fishing practices, there will be no fish left by 2048. So how do we feed our growing population now and in the future? The answer is sustainable agriculture, which uses resources to produce food today without compromising those resources for the future. Sustainable methods include those that promote soil health, minimize water use, lower pollution levels, and strengthen the local community. Now, one option is aquaculture or fish farming. Aquaculture relieves that fishing pressure on those wild populations and can produce fish year round. It is, however, extremely water intensive, requiring frequent water changes. And most aquaculture facilities stock fish in high densities in these massive tanks in order to maximize production. It also produces a ton of nutrient rich wastewater, which has to be disposed of properly to meet environmental regulations. Now, another sustainable method is hydroponics. This involves growing plants without soil and with their roots directly in the water. Hydroponics has a lot of benefits. It has a small land footprint, it has reduced water use, and it has rapid and year-round crop production. But hydroponics needs a constant input of fertilizer, and it also produces that wastewater that has to be disposed of properly. Now, if we combine aquaculture and hydroponics, you get aquaponics. Aquaponics relieves the economical and environmental challenges associated with hydroponics and aquaculture 
while embracing the benefits of both. In an aquaponic system, fish waste is converted into a fertilizer for plant growth, and plants remove excess nutrients from the water that can become toxic to the fish, allowing the water to be recycled right back into fish production. It's a closed-loop system, which means that no local resources are required for production, and no substances are released into the environment. Aquaponics uses 95% less water to produce fish compared to aquaculture and reuses wastewater for plant growth. It has a small land footprint and can be located practically anywhere. There's no requirement for fertile land or water to produce food, making these systems appropriate for urban food deserts and other food insecure areas. It uses a natural filtration and a natural source of fertilizer, resulting in the production of organic, healthy, nutritious food. So how does aquaponics work? So it's based on natural ecological processes, and it takes specific advantage of the nitrogen cycle. Now, the three main players in the system are the fish, the plants, and bacteria. Now, I know when I say bacteria, most people are thinking, oh man, that's what gives us diseases and makes us sick. Or, ooh, that's what makes stuff dirty and causes food to get recalled. But these are good bacteria and they're a vital component of the aquaponics system. So nitrogen is introduced into the system in the form of fish food. The fish eat this food, they incorporate some of that nitrogen into their body, and they release the rest of it in their waste as ammonium. Now, some of the excess food also decomposes and releases more ammonium into the water. Now, this ammonium at high enough levels can become toxic to the fish, and if not removed, is going to result in fish death. That's why regular water changes are required in home aquariums, as well as those massive tanks in aquaculture. Now, plants can use ammonium for plant growth, but it's not their preferred nitrogen source. So I want you guys to think of a food that you'll eat but you don't really like. Uh, for me, it's green peas. That's ammonium to a plant. The nitrogen source they really want is nitrate. Now think of a food you can't get enough of. I'm gonna go with chocolate cupcakes. <laughs> so here's where the bacteria play a starring role. They convert the ammonium in the fish water into nitrate for plant growth, or in my case, takes those yucky green peas and turns them into delicious chocolate cupcakes. So how can aquaponics sustainably produce food and help alleviate food insecurity? Well, using aquaponics, we can produce a protein source and fresh vegetables using significantly less water, without the addition of fertilizers, and requiring a fraction of the land footprint. The food that is produced is healthier and tastier than those produced by traditional methods. These systems can be built using inexpensive, easily accessible materials that can be purchased at a local hardware store and farm supply store. And finally, because it's based on natural processes, it doesn't take intensive training in order to learn how to manage these systems. Sustainable food production through aquaponics is the focus of our work at the Forum Sustainable Aquaponics Research Center. We work with commercial grade systems as well as systems built with low cost, easily accessible materials. Our research ranges from looking into ways to reduce power cost to uh, investigating the production of two protein sources like fish and maybe a crayfish to trying to figure out ways to battle pests that is safe for both fish and plants, which is way trickier than you would imagine. We also work with local schools to incorporate aquaponics into the classroom. We participate in community outreach events focused on sustainable food production, and we work with nonprofit organizations in their efforts to include aquaponics and community enhancement projects. An aquaponic system could easily be incorporated into a community garden. It can provide fresh fish and vegetables to our neighbors experiencing food insecurity. 
the strength, or the, our Southern culture is based on the strength of our communities. And this gives us the unique opportunity to lead the way in feeding our communities with aquaponics. Just think, if we use aquaponics to produce fish and vegetables to feed our neighbors, we stand a chance of a future where no one goes hungry. Thank you.